Hi, my name is N. Kite, and I'm going to talk about gender. One thing to keep in mind here is I'm not an expert on this topic. If you want to know more about a certain gender identity, you need to speak to people who identify that specific way. Gender can be a really tricky topic, so I like to break it down into three main parts. The first part is your internal identity. This is how you identify. The second part would be your gender expression. And this is how you most express yourself. It could be through the way you dress, it could be even just your mannerisms and your appearance. And the third part is your assigned sex at birth. Now, society tends to view gender in a very binary way, which means two parts. In this case, male and female. But there are actually a lot of different ways you can identify between those two and even outside of those two. So that's what we're gonna look at today. To help better see how gender is a spectrum, I created a circular map right here. And I'm gonna use traditional colors for this map. So we're gonna use blue for male and pink for female. Now we're gonna label this map, but keep in mind that the labels that we're gonna to add to this map might not perfectly reflect the way that every different person identifies. The top portion of our map, we're gonna label pangender. And the term pangender just means somebody who might identify at any given point on the map at any time. Basically, pangender means all genders. So on the top portion of this map, you have three different shades of purple. And what these aim to do is show people who identify between male and female, and it's a gradient, because you've got people who are in the more blue purple section. And this section would be for people who identify more with male and masculinity, um, but there's still a mixture of male and female. And then you have the portion right in the middle, and this would be for people who equally identify with male and female portions of the mixture. The more pink section, you've got people who identify more with female traits, but are still a mixture of the two. So these people are still not male or female. They just identify more with one of those two sides, perhaps, but they consider themselves a mixture of the two. Now we're gonna label the bottom part of the map. And we're gonna label the bottom part of the map with the word agender. And agender just means a lack of gender. So where pangender on the top meant all genders, a gender on the bottom means none. So this would be outside of typical male and female views of gender. So the bottom portions of this map, you're gonna notice they don't fade to purple. Instead, they fade to white. And what's happening here is instead of the genders mixing together, they're fading away. So you've got male genders who are not quite wholly male and they identify as a little less male so they would be a little bit lighter blue in this on this graph and it's the same for the female side where people are not identifying wholly with female genders but uh, they're instead identifying a little bit as lesser female genders so that's what these light pink and light uh, blue portions are trying to convey here another couple of terms you might hear to describe these sections would be demi boy and demi girl demi genders would be genders which identify as less male or less female, people might use those terms for themselves. So the next part of the map that we're gonna look at, we're actually gonna add an outer ring to the map. We've discussed this a little bit so far, but we're gonna go into a little more depth. This is binaries and non-binary. Binary genders are gonna be male and female. That's it. It's binary or those two parts. Non-binary genders are gonna be anything between or outside of those two. And this is a term people will typically use for themselves when they wanna simplify or they're not quite sure where they fall on the map. For example, I identify as agender, which we'll get to in a minute, but I use the term non-binary online all the time. There's nothing wrong, by the way, with being in a binary. If you consider yourself part of a binary gender, that's fine. Where it becomes problematic is when people say that they only believe in binary genders they're doing themselves a disservice because there are a number of genders between the two. If somebody says that they identify as non-binary and they don't express themselves any further than that, you don't need to ask what specific gender they identify as. And the reason could be simply that they don't know. And so they're using the term non-binary because it's an umbrella term and it encompasses a lot of space on this map. And they know that they're somewhere in a certain section, but they haven't quite pinned it down yet. They may never pin it down and that's fine. So non-binary could actually be what somebody says to express their gender completely. So the last ring of the map has to do with our second point of gender, which if you remember was gender expression. Um, so we talked about gender identity in the innermost ring. So that's where you would pin your identity. And so this ring here, what it's doing is showing us people who would express themselves in a more, what we are gonna call mask way and a more femme way. Um, and then of course you have the top and bottom portions, which again would be a mixture of the two on the top and a lack of the two on the bottom. But this is also a spectrum, which means, you know, it moves gradually from portion to portion. So somebody who expresses themselves in a more mask way, they're gonna express themselves in a more susceptible 
societally male way. And then as you move closer to the top portion, you're gonna have people express themselves more as a mixture of the two. So they like to take portions from both parts of society and combine them. And then as you get closer to the femme side, you're gonna get people who are more comfortable wearing dresses normally because that's a very societally female thing to do. They might wear makeup a lot more often. They might do their nails, you know, be very high femme. Um, and then as you get to the bottom portion, you're gonna have people who try to look like neither male nor female. Not a blending of the two, there is a distinction. These people are gonna try to appear outside of those two. So another part of gender expression is your pronouns. And there are a lot of different pronouns out there, but for the most part, you're gonna hear he, him, she, her, and then you're gonna hear they, them the most for the top and bottom portions of this ring. My pronouns are they, them. So I prefer to be referred to as they, them. There's a whole bunch of other uh, pronouns that people have created to best describe themselves. So they might say something you've never heard. The best way to know how to refer to somebody without being offensive is to ask them, what are your pronouns? And it's okay to ask about that. Pronouns are something that you should be able to talk about without offending other people. So now I'm gonna look at pinning myself on this map with the three rings. So I internally identify as agender. So I would be in the white portion on the bottom of the map. So where I express myself on the map is a lot more here. I try my best to express myself in the most neutral way possible. This, <laughs> this is so hard. Like neutral expression is so hard because when you're, when you're expressing yourself as a mixture of the two, so if you're up at the top part of the map, then you can take societally from male and female. The whole binary is your playing field. But when you're trying to express yourself in a neutral way, where you're not male or female, but instead you're outside of those two, you're having to create basically new expressions. I mean, you can't pull too much from masculine or feminine traits because it makes you uncomfortable. In my case, it does. And so I'm trying my best to, to present myself in a very neutral way outside of both. And it's a very challenging thing to do because society is steeped in binary gender, male and female. So our last pin is the sex that you were assigned at birth. Um, this is also viewed very binary by society, very male and female, but it's actually not binary. Uh, biological sex is actually something that is on somewhat of a spectrum. You can be born with both male and female sex organs and be perfectly fully functioning and healthy. I'm not a biologist, so I don't really know a lot about this. I just know that it is also not binary. So the majority of the time you are gonna see mostly male and female binaries when it comes to biological sex. If you wanna talk about your own biological sex, that's fine. But you should never go up to somebody and ask what their biological sex is. For the sake of the video, I'm comfortable pinning myself on this map. So I would pin myself in this blue section for my assigned sex. I just took these three pins and placed them on this map, but my pins are just dots. Something to keep in mind is sometimes people's pins might look more like ranges. What this is, is it's generally referred to as gender fluidity. So this is somebody who would pin themselves at different points of the map, maybe at different times, or at a certain section of the map altogether where they kind of move between those spots. And then you've also got bi-gender identities. Bi-gender identities basically just mean they would place two points on this map for their internal identification. The last term we're gonna look at is transgender. So there are three terms I wanna go over that fit into this transgender category. The first is transgender itself. Transgender just means anybody who is assigned a certain gender at birth but moves to another portion of this map during their lifetime. And often transgender people are gonna move from one binary on the map to another, but not always. Transgender people are not limited to one experience. Oftentimes, transgender people do not actually consider themselves as having moved at all on this map. They consider themselves, let's say a transgender woman was born as a woman, but was assigned male at birth because of her biological makeup, and since then has been working to make herself more comfortable in her body. But you will also have transgender people who were assigned male at birth, identified with being male for a time, and then decided later in their life that they did not identify with being male and instead were female. So you're not gonna see like one thing across the board. Just wanted to note that. Okay, back to the video and they might move via therapy, hormones, surgery. They might not transition at all. There will be people who identify as transgender who do not transition. And again, it comes down to they use that term for themselves. We're respecting them when they use that term. And the reason is because oftentimes this could come down to them not having the resources to transition. If somebody says they're transgender, but they can't transition, that doesn't make them less transgender. They're still transgender. They just either can't transition, don't want to transition, or whatever, and we can respect that decision as well. So the next term we're gonna look at, besides transgender, is genderqueer. This is tricky because 
you might say, well, N, you moved from one portion of the map to another, so aren't you transgender? No, but it is kind of a fine line between genderqueer and transgender. I would consider myself genderqueer. What that means is I was assigned a certain gender at birth. I don't identify with that gender, and I'm not taking steps to transition to that gender. Basically, I don't want to make light of people who are deciding to transition. So I don't want to say, yeah, I'm transgender, and claim that term for myself when I have not had any kind of transgender experience. The third and last term that we're going to use in this little breakdown is cisgender. And cisgender is very simple. It's somebody who was assigned a certain sex and gender at birth. They identify internally with that gender that they were assigned at birth. So somebody who is born, they're assigned male, they identify with being male, and they're male, and that's it. They're cisgender male. This is a very complex topic, so it requires a lot of explanation. I really hope it was helpful and not more confusing. And again, I am a gender. I'm not a transgender woman. If you want to talk and learn more about transgender women, you need to go talk to transgender women. My experiences as an agender person might not be universal. So while I can speak on my experiences, I can't speak for every single agender person out there. So if you want to look at this map on a more stationary setting, I did post it on my Instagram. This is my Instagram. I'm putting it here on the screen, I assume. Maybe it's somewhere else on the screen, but right here. And um, you can look at the map there. You can also rewatch this video as many times as you want to kind of understand it a little better. Yeah, that's all. So thanks for watching. Yay. Ta-da. I don't know why I'm so awkward. I'm sorry.